Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. Everyone, welcome to the show. I have an update to share about one of Trump's capital insurrectionists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. A 49-year-old Army veteran, former police officer, and Virginia resident Thomas Robertson was seen in photos and videos inside the Capitol on January 6th. He was with his then fellow officer, Jacob Fracker. Robertson was seen carrying a large wooden stick, which prosecutors said that he brought to use as a weapon. But Robertson's attorney claimed that Robertson was using it to, as a walking stick because he was once shot in the thigh in the line of duty. Following the Capitol attack, Robertson posted on social media, he said, quote, CNN and the left are just mad because we actually attack the government, who is the problem, and not some random small business. The right in one day took the fucking U.S. Capitol. Keep poking us. Robertson also posted that he was, quote, proud of himself because he was, quote, willing to put some skin in the game. And he proved that he was proud of himself by sharing January 6 photos and videos with his fellow officers. He also did an interview with Newsweek magazine, and he told them that he broke no laws. This is a cop, remember? And he claimed that he was escorted into the building by the police. So Robertson was arrested on January 13th of last year. And after being charged with the basic four misdemeanors, Robertson was then hit with a superseding indictment for obstructing an official proceeding, civil disorder, entering a restricted building or grounds, two counts of disorderly conduct, and tampering with documents or a proceeding. During Robertson's arrest, the FBI agents found a loaded assault rifle, four silencers, and a partially assembled pipe bomb in his home. And following his arrest, Robertson became emboldened. He continually posted threatening messages on social media. He wrote at one point, quote, I've spent most of my adult life fighting a counterinsurgency, about to become part of one and a very effective one. He also threatened FBI agents um, in a message to his former police chief, Robertson wrote in part, quote, I am done being civil about it. If they come here again, many will die, possibly me, definitely many of them. And then he also wrote, quote, they seem to be pressing a war, and I aim to give them more than what they want. And then he ended that message saying, quote, I can kill every agent that they send for probably two weeks, maybe longer. One man. If they start to realize that, they will stop the bullshit tyranny. And in July of last year, you may remember I did a, an update on this story. Robertson's bail was revoked, and he was sent back to jail because he purchased more than 30 guns online. And this is prohibited while under indictment, while under a federal, federal indictment. He's not allowed to have weapons. And unlike his friend, Fracker, Robertson actually chose to go to trial. Well, on April 11th of this year, he was found guilty on all counts by a jury of his peers. And based on the most serious felony charge, Robertson was looking at up to 20 years in prison. Although, the federal sentencing guidelines are always much lower, as you guys probably know by now, and the prosecutor was asking for eight years behind bars. Robertson's attorney, on the other hand, requested a sentence of approximately two years, and he told the judge, quote, his life is already in shambles. In a pre-sentencing memo, Robertson told the judge that he took responsibility for his actions, but he also wanted the judge to understand some of the contributing factors. Among them, Robertson blamed stress 
excess alcohol consumption and conspiracy theories, which he said were fed to him by Facebook's algorithm. Robertson also said that he became the caretaker of an older friend who had brain cancer. And this person was a, quote, vocal and enthusiastic Trump supporter. So he said he was, quote, exposed to lots of pro-Trump, anti-Biden media. And Robertson claims that the stress of the situation caused him to drink too much at night. And then he became submersed in, quote, deep rabbit holes of election conspiracy theory. So U.S. District Judge Christopher Cooper presided over Robertson's case. And uh, although I've been pretty critical of his sentencing decisions, He did good with this one. Judge Cooper told Robertson that he didn't believe that he had accepted responsibility for his actions. And he said, quote, I read this stuff and it seems like you really think of partisan politics as war. I sincerely believe you would answer a call to duty if something like this were to happen again. Cooper also said that he agreed with the jury in their assessment that Robertson went to the Capitol to obstruct the electoral proceeding. And he said that Robertson was an, quote, active and willing participant. With that, Robertson was sentenced to seven years and three months in prison, three years of probation and a $2,000 restitution fee. So Robertson is now tied with Texas resident Guy Reffitt for the longest sentence of any of the January 6th participants. Um, Both thought that they'd get a better deal in a jury trial, and they both learned the hard way that Trump lied again when he said that they were the silent majority in the country. Tough lesson to learn, more than seven years without your family. Anyway, guys, when and if I hear more, I will let you know because he's probably going to file an appeal, I would imagine, but um, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So thank you so much for watching and listening. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.